We are about to celebrate our 20th anniversary of V-Series, which obviously is a really significant milestone. As part of the celebration, we really wanted to bring a lot of the stories through the generations to life. Certainly Gen 1 you know, was a uh, Cadillac's toe in the water in this space. It may not be well known, but the second gen was an architecture evolution. We also expanded the uh, number of offerings. We included now a sedan, a coupe, and the wagon. We talk to a lot of customers, obviously, and in every audience, there's somebody that, bring back the wagon. I mean, it's like a chant, so definitely a cult classic. Whether you drove the sedan, the coupe, or the wagon, you got almost identical performance. And to have a family of cars with that kind of capability was really something that nobody else had done. My next question was going to be about trade-offs, but it doesn't sound like you made any compromises or trade-offs by having three body styles. Chris talked about the first-gen car being a toe in the water. The second-gen car was a cannonball dive into the deep end of the pool. It included being faster on the Nürburgring, first sedan to break the eight-minute barrier. I was standing in line for breakfast, and the guys were all in their race suits. I actually overheard one of them talking about, well, there's that Cadillac out there. We've got to watch out for that car, and that's respect. A lot of people ask, why do we go to the Nürburgring? You know, I think that started over 20 years ago for GM, and it's a big endeavor, a huge effort, and it puts the car in positions that you just will never be able to on any other track in the world. It's not just a unique thing for one element of the car, it's the whole car gets tested in every fashion. What about the seats? Any improvements made between Gen 1 and Gen uh, 2? It's near and dear to my heart. Having a Recaro seat in the car brings a whole bunch of street cred. Having that glove-like feel of the seat is integral to having the right experience in a performance car. As you were setting records and knocking things out of the park, any stories that you can tell? We reserved the track on the last day of our last trip in Germany to go set lap times, and Aaron drove the manual, obliterated the record, and we wanted to start calling people, but it was 3 a.m. back in Detroit. We literally wrote a press release, a bunch of engineers sitting around in Germany writing a press release, and we mailed it to the communications team, so it was in their inbox when they got into the office. It was super cool because within several hours, we were reading that press release on the internet. Obviously, we have the race cars behind us, but racing is a critical element of V-Series, and you're really the expression that we have on the racetrack of the performance, credibility, and the passion that we have. But then also, you know, take your wife to the opera in the car, which the car looks like it should do and will do. We're finding people that have the same values that we do, and we've just amped that up every generation. I know the underpinnings and the foundation underneath are perfectly engineered and executed, and it brings this driving experience that is second to none. To be working on a V-Series kind of felt like being picked for the travel team because it really felt special.